What's up guys, it's Frozen Electronics. Look, I'm not holding the camera. I have a tripod, it's a miracle. And uh, the really cool thing about this tripod is that it's got uh, a completely uh, vertical mode. So I can do stuff like this where it's shooting straight down and I can actually zoom in quite a bit before it loses focus. Yeah, right about there. So as you can see, I mean, that's pretty close up. Uh, that's a bridge rectifier. But let's get a surface mount part under there. Uh, these are a fairly large surface mount. They're SOIC-8s. But I mean, as you can see, uh, we'll be able to do some cool stuff with this camera and this tripod now. I can maybe do a little bit more on soldering, um, et cetera. Bum, bum, bum. All the way back up. Oh my god. Oh my god. Zoomed way in. <laughs> anyway, so that's just a quick little update. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, having a tripod is super, super awesome. Um, I got a couple of other things. <clears throat> I don't know if I showed this already or not. I don't think I did. Bum, 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 bum. Here's a wire. And it's not stripped. And then you stick it in this thing. And you go bam. And look at that. Stripped. Bam. Nice clean strip. These things, I recommend them to any beginner. Um, well, sort of, actually, because I stripped wire for the last year almost with a knife. Uh, and by doing that, you learn a lot about, uh, you just sort of get a feel for it. And you just kind of do this motion, whoo, and you get a nice clean strip. Um, before that, I would try and strip them with my needle nose. There's a little cutter in the middle there. And that, of course, you get a feel for that too. You have to have very precise, um, very precise motion with that. But uh, these things are amazing. They have a bunch of different gauges on them. This one has uh, 22, 20, 18, 16, 14, 12, 10, and 8. So that's a lot of different gauges. Uh, I feel like I'm way further back from the camera. There's like all this empty space around me. And now I can't really have you facing with my equipment behind me as a background because I don't have anything to put the tripod on. Hmm. And this is just like a little desktop tripod. It's not like a huge one. Um, so eventually I'll get a big full-size one as well so that I can do... Uh, uh, take you guys to electronic stores, that sort of thing, interview the guys, show you around a little bit easier. Uh, but for now, this is huge because now I can actually do a little bit more professionally uh, done stuff. Uh, the other thing I got was, well, I mean, I bought a whole bunch of stuff when I was in Toronto, but I finally have a set of helping hands. Um, now, these, uh-oh, oh, there's that yawning again. Oh, man. Now, a big key thing is that you've, I mean, almost all of them have magnifying glasses, but if you notice, I took heat shrink on mine. Um, this is a really key thing, because you still get the grip. If you can see, uh, it might be kind of, uh, you can see that. As you can see the teeth on the alligator clip. Here, I'll see if I can get it to focus a little better. You can still see that there's still teeth on the alligator clip there. So you still get grip, but you won't put marks in your board or whatever you're soldering. So I recommend getting some nice thin heat shrink around there and uh, shrinking it and then you got a nice, uh, it still has nice grip, nice sort of that silicone rubbery grip. Um, also, if you're going to get a helping hands and you're going to, uh, you don't want to spend a lot of money. Uh, uh oh. I miss editing already. These ones that you have to tighten, these are a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, you can tighten them by hand, but uh, then things will slip around. But still, if you're going to go cheap, this is the way to do it. Because then you can tighten them up. Uh, they get really tight. Everything stays in place. However, if uh, the ones that have the joints like this, there's a two ball joints, and then there's a, the plates on either side that tighten. Even when you get these ones nice and tight, you can still move them around and adjust them fairly easily. And they're still nice and stiff. Um, and I like how they're sort of double jointed because then you can get sort of a range of motion by turning them like that. You can sort of keep them in the same plane and then just sort of move them up and down, uh, which is nice. Uh, this one in particular, I mean, it's got a million of these little joints. They always look really complicated, but really they're not. They're actually so simple and so easy to use. Helping hands. Uh, Dave Jones mentioned it in his uh, post. So, so essential. 
Um, what else have I gotten recently I wanted to show? Today I bought a couple more things. I mean, I bought the tripod. I'm surprised that the source here in Canada, uh, they still carry some electronics prototyping stuff. Like, they have these little project cases for, like, four or five bucks. Uh, they have both an aluminum lid and a plastic lid. I think you're supposed to pick one or the other, but technically you could use it as, like, a shielding can. You could leave it in there and then screw that down over top of it, which is kind of cool. Um, what's funny is that they also sell these little boards. Sorry that I keep going off camera here. They also sell these little boards, which are pretty cool. I don't know how well, you, there, that's a better angle. You can see that there is a, a bus down the middle for power, and then there's breakouts um, for different size chips. Oh my god, oh, this is so frustrating. Every time I open my mouth and start talking on camera. So um, there's, you can get like a, like a triple five timer sort of thing on this side. Um, on this side, you can get a slightly wider chip, but it's a little bit non-standard. If you want to do something like an Atmega, it'll fit, but you're going to have to do some creative connections and soldering because you'd sort of have to solder the chip on last because it'll actually cover up one of these whole breakout sides like that. So that's not good. But the funny part is this board, when you buy it, it looks like it's going to fit in this box, but it doesn't. It's slightly too big, and that's so ridiculous. If you're going to sell these little boards and these little boxes, at least make them compatible. That's just, it's just common sense. It's so ridiculous that they don't do that. But, of course, just Murphy gets you, and, uh, of course they don't fit. I also, uh, got a 100-foot roll. I used to buy wire on 25-foot rolls, because, yes, they are cheaper. You don't have to put as much money down. Uh, but I highly recommend getting 100-foot rolls. They last much longer. Another tip for beginners is, if you can, get solid core wire. Uh, multi-core isn't... Uh, there's pros and cons to both, but for breadboarding especially, if you want to make custom lengths of wire, get solid core because it's so much easier in a breadboard. I should rename this to Yawning Electronics, seriously. Um, get uh, solid core because then when you strip it uh, with your stripping cutters that you got because I recommend it. Oh, this thing is just so amazing. Bam! You get, uh, of course, it's a solid core wire. So, as you can see, nice and thin. It fits perfectly into breadboard slots. Uh, it's bendable. Uh, this is 22 gauge, I believe. 24 gauge. Uh, so it's nice and thin, uh, easy to work with. Uh, I would probably recommend getting 22 or 20 gauge uh, breadboards. 24 might be a little bit small uh, for some breadboards. It might not get a great connection, but solid core wire, 100 feet. Uh, don't worry about all the pretty colors. Yes, it's sometimes it's nice. Like, I did get a, a small roll of white, because uh, that is kind of cool. It does kind of look cool when you're wiring things up. But get red, green, and black. Um, those are going to be the most useful. Um, I usually stick with red and green. You can use either green or black for ground. The reason it's good to do that is because if someone else is looking at your circuit, um, for example, what I've been doing is I use red for power, green for ground, and then white for signals, um, in some cases. Sometimes I just use the same color for all of it, if it's a, you know, prototype circuit that I'm just throwing together quickly. Um, but little tips like that, um, yeah, I know they sell purple and pink and blue and all these cool colors, and yeah, sometimes it is cool to use those colors, but honestly... Red and black and green are so hugely important to you. Sorry, I just realized that that camera was tilted way up. Um, so, yeah, that's another tip. This has sort of turned into an impromptu, let's show everyone everything in my lab. Somebody made a comment um, on one of the videos a while back. They're like, man, you're surrounded by boards. It's like a kid in a candy store. And I started to realize, yeah, you're kind of right. I've got, like, this whole stack of uh, the uh, evaluation boards from TI. Oh, I missed one. So I've got four of these wicked boards in this one. Oh, the C-Series development. Oh, it's so awesome. I'm going to have to do a whole separate video on that. Uh, and actually, I have, if you go over to the Element 14 website and you look at the road tests and the Tiva C-Series connected development kit, I'm also over there as Mr. Aurelius R, I think. Or it might actually show my real name. I can't remember. Uh, anyway, I don't really care if you guys figure out my real name. I'm not really that paranoid. Um, so, uh, you can see the video I did, uh, is actually on my channel, but I put it as unlisted because it was really sort of for the Element 14 things, where I sort of do an unboxing 
And then I'm also trying to upload the videos uh, where I show the demo software on it. So that board's really cool. Uh, and then if you guys look over here at my board over uh, my desk, as I'm sure you guys have seen, I've pointed it out before. I have my AVR Dragon. Uh, I do have an Arduino. It's the SparkFun Red Board. I'm not a huge fan of it. I finally got it to program with the FTDI header. I mean, I don't even know what I did. Uh, it just wouldn't work. I was using my logic analyzer. I was looking at uh, all the pins, and the reset pin is capacitively coupled. Um, if like the button, the reset button isn't. It goes directly from VCC through a pull-up resistor. Um, to the reset, but for some reason the reset from the header over here is goes through a 0.1 microfarad uh, cap and for some reason I think that that might have been causing some trouble um, because when the reset goes low um, it's not grounded on the other side really like yeah it's connected to this pin but I don't think this pin can necessarily uh, I know they can sync and source a little bit of current anyway it finally started working. I don't know why, um, but that's. I thought that was kind of weird. When I reverse engineered it, one of those two little caps you can see there, one of those two is actually, it goes through the reset line. Um, you can kind of see that trace there going uh, sideways up like that and then over. Anyway, so I thought that was kind of weird. Um, then I, sorry, to continue, I also have my Olimax, um dev boards. These are great. I really highly recommend these. They sell them at SparkFun. Um, there's, also, there's a couple other places you can buy them as well. I think, uh, yeah, Newark uh, slash Element 14 slash Farnell, they carry them as well. They actually have a better price on the 40 pin ones like this. The great thing is that the JTAG is broken out as well as the SPI, uh, or sorry, ISP over on the other side there. Nice big button. Uh, it's got the serial converter a max 232 built in right there with all the caps it's all set up all you do is you hook up your tx and rx and away you go um it's got a power regulator it actually has a bridge rectifier as well so you can throw ac or dc on there which is awesome um i've actually modded this one a couple times i've switched out regulators and done a couple little mods to it um but I haven't used it a lot yet. There's a little bit of solder on it. But that's the thing is that when you do start using it, yeah, like I was trying to keep it pristine and not solder it that much. But whatever. It's a development board. They're meant to be used, you know. That's why they're not terribly expensive. Because, uh, if you know, of course you can just desolder things and solder wicked. I mean, if you solder them like a couple, you know, a hundred times, eventually it'll get worn out. But they're meant to be used. The AVR 40 pin one um, actually matches almost all the major... Uh, I'm pretty sure it does match all the major Atmegas that come in a 40 pin package. So the Atmega, um, let me think, the, I think the Atmega 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 should all fit in here, plus the 324, 644, 1284, uh, 32A, um, all the major ones, because the, the important pins are like the VCC ground and the... Uh, crystal and basically everything else is just broken out the only other pins that might be uh, important uh, the reset but most of that stuff doesn't move around which is kind of cool the other one I have here it's the 20 pin uh, 20 or 24 I think it's the 20 pin and even though it's the same size as the Atmega 328p it's not the correct pin out which I sort of uh, was disappointed however I will recommend the best chip to stick on there is the AT Tiny 2313 or the AT Tiny 2313A. Um, it's a great development board for those. Uh, my favorite microcontroller is the AT Tiny 13, which there is no breakout board for. Not really, anyway. So I am um, prototyping one. I've shown that to you on another uh, video. And actually, I sent away to OSH Park to have my. Uh, boards actually made up and those should be here soon and as I said I'm gonna make a video of me building those up and if um, there's interest I was actually thinking about selling them or producing them in some way because the AT Tiny 13A it's such an overlooked microcontroller I've got a huge tube of them here they're so tiny little 8 pin device somewhat similar to the PIC 12F devices um, but the AT, I mean, they're fairly feature packed, especially the 13A and the 13V. 13V is just like the low power version. Sorry, my roommate is singing and playing music in the background. Um, but uh, 
they're really useful and you can throw two or three of them on a board um, if you need to. Usually I like to use them because they actually only have five, uh, let me think, yeah, five and at the most six inputs and outputs because of course there's only eight pins. You can actually uh, turn the reset off um, and then use that as an I.O. pin, but then you can't do ISP programming, you have to use high voltage serial programming, which you can do with the AVR Dragon if you have some female to female jumper uh, cables, which is kind of cool. Um, but most of the time you're just going to want to keep the five pins open and be able to do in circuit programming. Um, so that's what my breakout boards are going to do. I'm also going to probably write up uh, a couple pages of like little projects you can do with the ATtiny 13A. And so I might bundle that with the boards and sell them. So if people are interested, I think that's a good idea. Tell me and I'll uh, I'll do that. I'll, you know, I'll tweak the boards, get them into a nice shape and then start selling them. Anyway, this uh, video is way longer than I was intending. We're already at 16 minutes. I'm sure most of you guys are bored to death and have probably tuned out. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys really like my videos. I know this is the last one earlier today and today have been kind of boring and a little bit dry, but we'll get back into it soon now that I have the tripod. Um, I'll have to continue doing these one take videos like this until I can get my editing software up and running. But uh, in the meantime, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, I'm also over on Twitter, um, at Frozen Electronics, uh, or is it at Frozen Electronics Blog? Hmm, better double check that quickly. Yeah, I am over on Twitter. I think the link might actually be on my uh, YouTube page somewhere. I can't remember if it's linked directly or not. Let me just take a look. Um, at Frozen Elect Blog, that's right. Uh, there's actually a limit to the length of your Twitter name. I didn't realize that. So Frozen with a capital F, F-R-O-Z-E-N, capital E-L-E-C, capital B-L-O-G, all one word. I do have uh, 53, or oh, no, 17 followers. I'm following 53 people. Um, and all my, all my um, videos are announced over there. I, in my Frozen Electronics uh, email, I get, uh, Jesus Christ, what was that? My roommate next door, I think, is getting kind of loaded. Um, I keep getting emails all the time of new subscribers, which is awesome. Uh, this is fucking wicked. Uh, I'm really happy that you guys are subscribing so much. I'm going to take a look right now, actually. I have... Ba -ba -ba -ba. I wonder if I can actually just look at this. Channel analytics. Because it doesn't show up to me like it does to you guys, right? Uh, oh, in the last 30 days, my views have gone way up. 781. 4,438 minutes watched. Wow! Part of that was the bus pirate. Uh, I think that uh, Dangerous Prototypes retweeted that, or someone else retweeted that, so I got a big spike there. Total estimated earnings, zero dollars and zero cents. <laughs> Subscribers, 36 in the last 30 days. Yeah, most of those views is my tutorial on how to use the uh, bus pirate, 562 views. Um, oh, it doesn't actually show me how many subscribers I have. Well, that's kind of annoying. 39 subscribers. 40 subscribers already, dude. This is like a tiny little channel. Anyway, this video is getting way too long. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Really, really helps. You guys are the best. Uh, as one guy in particular, I already mentioned it last time, Peter Kaima. Kaima? Kaima? Hmm. Kaima. It's Dutch. I studied Afrikaans for a little bit, so I should be able to pronounce that. Peter Kaima. Uh, he's really cool. He and I have been talking back and forth. If you guys want to chat with me, Go right ahead, send me an email, uh, look at me up on Google Hangouts. I'd gladly talk to you if you have any questions. I might end up asking you questions if you have expertise. I really like to grow the community um, over on the EEV blog forum as well, Mr. Aurelius R. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys. I'll cut it off here. Bye.